You're on. Hi everyone, I am here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good Wednesday. Today's September 11th. Let's remember what happened today 18 years ago. Can you believe it's been 18 years since the planes crashed into the towers and the other plane crashed into the ground and the other plane crashed into the other building. I believe they said 3,000 people lost their lives that day, 18 years ago, not counting the people's families who basically lost their life when they lost their loved ones. I remember when I seen that it said 18 years ago, I thought, oh my gosh. And I know, yes, it has been 18 years because my youngest, or my oldest nephew is, he was just a baby back then when it happened. Because we remember, I remember watching it on the news when it came on. And we seen it, and we seen it happen on the news. And he was just a baby, and he's 18 now. He's a senior this year in high school. Time goes by so fast. Um, Michael Karens was supposed to have his surgery today, his hernia surgery. Has anybody who talks to him heard anything about how he's doing and everything? Because I haven't heard anything. I wanted to see if anybody else did. Have you heard anything about him, sister? If you did, please let me know how he made it through with the surgery and everything, how the surgery went, because I haven't heard anything. Um, please keep Lonnie Dose Jr. in your prayers. Please pray for my sister, Melody Ramey. She's my youngest sister, my baby sister. Um, she's 32. I finally found out, you know, what was going on with her. She said she was up at OSU and she was very sick. Well, um, she told me today that her cervix is damaged and bleeding and that one of her kidneys is shut down. And I guess there's some other things going on as well. So please keep her in your prayers. She has five little kids. Um, please pray for Michelle Watkins, Linda Peoples, Linda Thacker, Zach Kirby, who has cancer, Sherman Crabtree. I do not know what was going on with him last night, but he scared me to death. Somehow he hit my arm last night and woke me up by accident. And I woke up and I heard him... <gasps> like gasping for breath he couldn't breathe and I was over there shaking him and yelling and stuff and he was like half asleep half awake he, he like really didn't know what was going on but he couldn't breathe and I was shaking him and trying to you know trying to do something and I got the inhaler and finally got him to use an inhaler a couple of times and he kept coughing and coughing and coughing and eventually finally it stopped it scared me to death I thought I was going to have to call the ambulance. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But please pray for him that that does not happen again. It's very scary. Very, very scary. Please pray for Rhonda Karshner and Abby Myers. Please pray for Cindy and Jim Welsh. Please pray for Dora Carver. Please pray for Elizabeth Jeffries. Please pray for Judy Thompson. I did hear from Granny Judy today. She's been sick and not feeling well, so please pray for her. She's not been able to eat, really. She has gastroparesis like I do. When she started telling me her symptoms, I told her, I said, I bet you have gastroparesis like me, because I know the symptoms of it all too well. And after a bunch of tests, like I had to go through, it took forever to get a diagnosis, forever. Every test under the sun painful tests. She said, I do have gastroparesis. And I knew then what she was going to have to go through. 
They also, like her, took her gallbladder out like they did mine, thinking that would help. But I didn't want to tell her, but it didn't help me. And I'm nobody that they've done that to has helped that I've been told. But I didn't want to discourage her, you know, because you never know. Um, please pray for Barb Post. Please pray for Judy Osborne, who has cancer. Please pray for Linda Th or April Thacker. Please pray for Michael Cairns, who had his surgery today. Still waiting to hear an update on him. Please pray for Jim Mitchell, and please pray for Logan Cairns, who is in therapy for his knee. Okay, um, did get some pictures done last night for the book. I did this one of Baby Dumbo arriving to his mom by the stork. I did that one. And then I did this one of Dumbo taking a bath. Then I did this one of Dumbo and his mom playing. Sherm did this one with this spooky house. And I did this one of this doll in the living room. I believe it's a spaniel. And then I did this one. It's the last one so far. Little duckies talking to a fish. I got some cube steak in there. I'm cooking cube steak with mushroom soup for the gravy. We're going to have mashed potatoes with it. And I think macaroni and cheese. Okay, guys. So today we're going to be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. Psalm 55 and Proverbs chapter 23, verses 4 and 5. Today in 2 Corinthians, we'll be talking about Paul's vision and his thorn. I see they changed this up a little. They got red writing on here now for some things, which is usually uh, Jesus' words. They've never done that before on here. All right, so let's get started. Paul says, I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Alright guys, and that's where we're going to stop with 2 Corinthians today. Our psalm today is Psalm 55. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a mascal of David. It is 23 verses. Listen to my prayer, O oh God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Lord, confuse the wicked, confound their words, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the realm of the dead, for evil finds lodging among them. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me. Even though many oppose me, God who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them because they have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. Amen. And that was Psalm 55, Psalm of David. And we're going to end today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 23, verses 4 and 5, saying 8 of the 30 sayings of the wise. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. All right, guys, and that was saying eight of the 30 sayings of the wise. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. It sure is a hot one again today, guys. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.